the next generation of Formula 1 drivers have arrived, and Verstappen isn't the only driver that's proving himself in the sport. So was the 2021 season a sign of things to come? And is this new generation already better than the older drivers in the sport? Let's have a look. My name's Andy, and this is Behind the Drive. The Formula 1 grid ages have been increasingly polarised over the last few years. In 2022, 14 of the 20 drivers will be between the ages of 21 and 27, and the remaining 6 drivers will be aged 32 or over. So there are clearly two groups in terms of the ages of the drivers on the grid for the next season, and it's been moving towards these two distinct groups for a few years now. Over the last few seasons, we've watched a few of this younger group emerge into the traditional top teams on the grid, and in 2022, George Russell will race for Mercedes, Max Verstappen will race for Red Bull, Lando Norris will race for McLaren, and Charles Leclerc will race for Ferrari. Each of those drivers are aged 24 or under. Given it's expected that one of those four teams will be the strongest this year, it's likely that we will continue to see this shift with a member of the younger age group competing for and potentially winning the 2022 World Championship. The Inevitable Shift In an interview with Martin Brundle towards the end of the 2021 season in Brazil, Verstappen stated that he would be world champion if not in 2021, that it would be in 2022 or 2023. He was talking as though this generational shift was inevitable, and when you consider the fact that we will have so many of the younger drivers in potentially competitive seats for 2022, you can see why he thought that way. And in the end, Verstappen did win the championship in 2021, having been the best performing driver over the course of the 22 race season. It was incredibly impressive, and it's been almost inevitable ever since he joined the sport at the age of 17. He was very quickly regarded as a future world champion back in 2015, and he has certainly lived up to that expectation. A few years after he arrived in the sport, Charles Leclerc joined the grid with Sauber and quickly impressed, getting his promotion to Ferrari after just a single season with that team. And then, in 2019, George Russell and Lando Norris arrived in the sport and again pretty quickly made their mark, with some great performances with Williams and McLaren respectively. To build on this, three of these four drivers beat their older teammate in 2021, with the only driver falling short being Charles Leclerc losing out to Carlos Sainz. But it's worth mentioning that Leclerc was somewhat unlucky over the course of the season, and that Carlos Sainz is the oldest driver that sits within the so-called younger driver portion of this grid. So yes, he lost out, but there's no doubting that if some luck had gone the other way, he could have easily come out on top. But regardless, these four young drivers have shown that they are capable of beating more experienced teammates and could either become team leaders in 2022 or are in that lead role at top teams already. And this, combined with all of their future potential, means it was inevitable that these drivers would become the future of Formula 1 and all of them have the potential to become world champion if they have the right car and the team. So thinking about the older group and the fact that more of them have and are moving away from top tier teams over time, it's this generation that's breaking through. What makes it almost unique though is just how young these drivers are that are going to be leading the sport into this new era. But before I take a look at whether Formula 1's getting younger in general, I want to take a moment to ask you to consider subscribing to Behind the Drive. I've got loads more F1 content to come in advance of the 2022 season, so make sure you're subscribed with notifications on to stay tuned. Thanks. Is Formula 1 getting younger? A theme of Formula 1 in the 21st century is just how young some of the drivers are when they enter the sport. In the first 50 or so years of Formula 1, teenagers were rarely seen on the F1 grid. There were four 19-year-old drivers that competed in their first races in 1961, 1963, 1980 and 1998. But in the 21 years since the turn of the century, there have been six drivers to make their F1 debuts as a teenager. And four of these drivers were younger than the previous record holder, Mick Thackwell. These being Jaime Alcachuari, Lando Norris, Lance Stroll, and of course, Max Verstappen. But the youngest racer isn't the only record that's seen this trend in the 21st century. Troy Ruttman won the 1952 Indy 500, which at the time counted as a Formula 1 race. He won that at the age of 22, and his record of being the youngest F1 race winner stood until Fernando Alonso won the 2003 Hungarian Grand Prix. 
But since Alonso's win, this record has been broken a further two times, with Sebastian Vettel at the 2008 Italian Grand Prix at the age of 21, and then Max Verstappen at the 2016 Spanish Grand Prix as he became the youngest driver to win an F1 race, and the first ever driver to win a race as a teenager, as he was just 18 years old. To add to this, of the 10 youngest race winners in history, 7 of them occurred in the 21st century, and of the 10 youngest pole sitters in history, 8 of them occurred in the 21st century. So once again, there's evidence to suggest that the younger drivers have been given more responsibility and opportunity in some of the best F1 cars on the grid in recent times. So based on this evidence, I think it's fair to say that yes, Formula 1 is getting younger, and this is evidenced by the fact that Formula 1 rules have been changed to put a minimum age on the F1 grid of 18 years old, which means Verstappen at 17 will likely be the youngest driver in history. For me, the minimum age requirement does imply that the sport has basically reached the limit in terms of the age of the youngest F1 drivers. The average age of the 2022 F1 grid is 26.9, down from 27.3 in 2021. So again, there's this trend downwards year on year, which means younger drivers finding themselves moving up into top seats is to be expected. If you're good enough, you're old enough. There's a saying that I believe has come from former Manchester United manager Sir Matt Busby, which says that if you're good enough, you're old enough. And Formula One has started to follow the same mantra in these recent times, as the F1 drivers have got younger and been given their opportunity at the expense of drivers that failed to impress. It's this that explains the big gap between the ages of 27 and 32 on the 2022 F1 grid. To make it into that top end of Formula One talent, the drivers will need to prove themselves. Of that older pool of drivers in F1 in 2022, all of them are race winners, and three of them have world championships to their name. So to me, that says that to have longevity in Formula 1 and prove that you are worth keeping in the sport over a young driver with bags of potential, you have to show that you can be a race winner in this sport. The interesting point around this will be how the teams perform this year that have these older and more experienced drivers. You'd expect that having a driver with more experience will allow these six teams to progress with their car development at a faster rate than those with drivers with less experience under their belts. This is a bit hypothetical, but I think it's clear that the teams may be more likely to trust a driver that's been in the sport for a long time. Another explanation for this trend to younger drivers could be explained by the fact that Mercedes and Lewis Hamilton have been so dominant in recent times. Looking at Ferrari for example, they were so far off the pace and failed to compete for the world championship at the end of 2019, which meant that dropping Sebastian Vettel was a sensible move for the Italian team, replacing him with Carlos Sainz, a younger driver with significant potential. Similarly, Red Bull got Max Verstappen into their team in 2016, when Verstappen was just 18 years old, because he had the talent and the team weren't in a position where they were really fighting for the championship. So this period of dominance from Mercedes, where they've achieved eight constructors' championships in a row, may be the root cause of this turn towards youth over the last 10 years or so. There is also the question of car testing time. Historically, teams would be able to give their young drivers ample opportunity to test their car throughout the season. There were a number of scheduled tests and even private tests as well, but these were banned in 2009 due to the excessive costs that the teams would incur. One of the predicted outcomes of this change was that rookies may be overlooked in favour of drivers that have experience racing in the sport. These days though, it seems like rookies are given their chance, primarily through loan deals where they can prove themselves in a backmarker car before graduating into the top tier teams. Verstappen, Leclerc and Russell have all gone through this process, while Norris was put straight into the McLaren F1 setup. So whilst it was a concern, it created this new environment for F1 drivers to go into a seat of a minnow team before they make their way up the grid. And perhaps this is another factor why the grid is getting younger, as the teams seek to give their younger drivers an opportunity to get into the sport, taking up a seat that might otherwise be occupied by an older driver. But throughout it all, these young drivers have been able to prove themselves at the top of Formula 1, and are now ready for these new regulations so that if they have a car that's capable of winning races, they'll be able to deliver. It's going to be fascinating to watch these drivers compete not only with their teammates this coming season, but with each other over the years to come. It's a situation that Formula 1 has not seen before, having this many young drivers in the top teams, and I can't wait to see how this new generation fight against the previous years. So I think it's fair to say that the next generation of Formula 1 drivers have arrived and they are well and truly ready to compete at the top.